Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 41 of Podcast of Five Rings, your source of enlightenment, the realm of video games, tabletop, anime, film, and tech. Each episode of Podcast of Five Rings releases Monday mornings on iTunes and SoundCloud, and topic by topic, day by day on YouTube, with the full video releasing on Friday. Catch updates about the podcast or for other news, give us a follow on your social media platform of choice listed in the description below. Man, I'm messing up the intros now. How if you, you listen, if you listen to the last episode, I totally botched that outro, and <laughs> now I'm just—it's always the one part at the end of the it intro. Gets you every time. It gets me. It sneaks up on you. Just lately, though. Just lately. I thought like you've been doing this for a while. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Forty-one episodes, <laughs> almost a year. You know, you know. You almost went a year without actually making a mistake. I, think I know, and then it, here we it go. It happened. It happened ever since you had to skip the one week and you weren't here. I know. You you did so well that it just like completely threw me <laughs> off my game. You're my shonen rival protagonist uh, to foil <laughs> of reading intros, Meta. You will never defeat my skills, Abs. Abs Coon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the defeated one. The GM and the overseer of P5R who can't read his intro, Obsidian. <laughs> Joined by the wall that will not fall, Tetsuo. I'm here. <laughs> who, who contacted my. Uh, <laughs> I can't say anything right. Contracted my plague. <laughs> I contracted your plague, but I certainly yes. contracted somebody's. Yeah. Hey, man, uh, it, it travels through the internet. That computer virus, I hear, right? Yeah, exactly. That's how computer viruses work. <laughs> the sauce gate of my Naruto, the dark fortune <laughs> duelist beta. <laughs> I don't even need to say Sasuke to your Naruto or something. something. I don't know. <laughs> Evil laughter. I mean, isn't that what the rivals are supposed to do? I don't think. Like, no, he got he got me with the Sasuke to my Naruto. <laughs> the Tetsuo to my Kaneda. <laughs> and that means Mao Sakura, because he's the resident wall card. God. He's not cool enough to be Kakashi. Or are you, Mao? <laughs> he's just not talking to anyone, apparently. Mao's gone. Oh no, Mao. <laughs> We're having technical difficulties. Oh, oh no, right at the start. It's it's that. <laughs> he refuses to respond to that. <laughs> I can't tell if he is trolling or not. Oh. Well, I hope he isn't because he's leading us off here, but What's to, to, to stall for time because I'm not throwing away that perfect uh, Naruto segue through the intro. <laughs> I'm going to ask how everybody's week was. Mine was uh, great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mel. You're oh, here. I didn't know. I, I got scared. You You, you were so quiet. <laughs> doing it again <laughs> i've been playing a lot of monster hunter <laughs> yeah god we i haven't all... gotten to play as much it's because you're bad I'm at slacking life. i know gosh what this is coming from the guy who puts 82 hours in in the first 48 hours of a game's release oh yeah i, I know, know. Right? well I also Piss. didn't have a job then Piss. or was i not sick That's... That sounds like an excuse. I'm making them. I'm I'm throwing them out down on the table. You take them, <laughs> leave them if you want them. It's not. It, it was. You know. It's not running at 60 frames. It was a full moon out. I stubbed my toe. <laughs> I've got excuses for days. <laughs> I went and got some pizza. <laughs> you know. Sun was in my eyes. You can't play it with your PS4 controller after you get greasy hands like that. And the bathroom's over there. I'm not gonna go wash them. Just gotta stop. Of course, he had to play with all of his squad mates, and there was only two of us on. And hook up with that other guy, uh, yeah. Met Meta. Was that his the name? Meat man. No, I heard. I heard he's. No, we're not cool enough player. to play with Meta. <laughs> hey, hey! I'll have you know that uh, I actually didn't even play it since like it, like the first uh, time I played the game, and then I think I just finally played it again yesterday. So my excuse is I just haven't been playing. I just I unlocked the third game. area, so you guys are probably way ahead of me. Uh, I'm not no, I far, I I far just far. unlocked. Uh, I'm the, way farther than all y'all. The coral forest or whatever. I yeah, that that's where I am, Meta. Yeah, I'm, I'm at the room, uh, area right after y'all. The um, rotten veil. So I'm really I'm really upset because it was like the first mission into the coral to the coral, and um, they threw every single creature at me, all the big bosses. So I ended up killing them all without ever doing the missions to kill them all. <laughs> just, I was just like, well, I guess. Experience. I was like, well, I traveled around everywhere. I went everywhere. And they were like, all the creatures kept popping up. And I was like, wow, that's a really big creature. I was like, I'm going to fucking kill it. It took me a while to find the campsite there. It did. It did. It took me a while. 
I didn't have a problem with that. I just had a problem finding the um, uh, photograph lizard. Yeah, yeah the, the photograph velociraptor, uh, Tsitsu Yaku or whatever it's called. Um, that one took me forever on that. I um, I will say my favorite thing so far is the botanical garden. It's the best thing that was like that I've unlocked thus far. I love the fact that I can just like uh, grow like different seeds or have bugs. Show oh yeah, up. it's like the best thing ever because I use I use the heavy bow gun, so I want to pick up all these types of seeds to actually craft up different ammo. Which means I'm running around half the time. I'm running around the map. I'm going like yoink, 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 <laughs> just taking from every single herb I run across because I don't know if I'll need to craft an item from it or not the next time I run through. Here, let me give you this game called Harvest Moon Meta. Mm -mm. If you want, if you want <laughs> no. to grow stuff. No. <laughs> wow. No, I don't want a game dedicated to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Harvest Moon's fun. Using it at all for the bugs or just only seeds? It's it's both. Like, I need... Um, Have you guys beer? gotten the uh, uh, great... What is it? Great horn wing or great horn something? Horn? Is it bug? No, I have not gotten that yet. The best oh, ones... Yeah. I don't know. The, the best bugs I've gotten so far are the god bugs and the bitter bugs, which you can pick up anywhere. Um, yeah. But those are just the ones that I consider the best because they create the most useful items. Yeah, if you put them in the farm, there's a chance that the um, the one that I'm talking about can show up. And once it does, or I think it's great horn, some, something with horn in the name. Anyway, once it does, you can start crafting the uh, butterfly armor, which is the top of fashion souls. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can craft yeah. that. I already have crafted. I want the, the spacesuit for my cat. <laughs> I love it so much. Like, I saw that. I saw that. Area. I want that spacesuit so badly. Actually, the one I'm really in love with, the gear that I really love, is um, the creature that I'm going to affectionately now call the lasagna from uh, the <laughs> guide. But uh, that gear looks amazing. Uh, it's so it's very cool. regal. Yes, it's like it looks like a full on like. Uh, it actually, kind of reminds me of the dragoon armor from Final Fantasy. That's why I think I really like it so much. <laughs> yeah, the one that I like the, the salami most. dog stuff. The salami dog. Yeah. Oh, the <laughs> Garan. Oh, yeah. it looks so good. Look like a ninja. All right. Oh, that you make for your cat is straight up samurai. You get a samurai. That's so cat. badass. I think the guy's stuff looks more samurai. I guess. Or Probably. Less yeah. Well, before yeah. our first topic turns into <laughs> fashion <laughs> stuff, <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's get on to the actual topics. So you're starting us off, Mal, like I said. Go on. Yeah, so what do you got? it's... I uh, just figured I'd talk about some video gaming news in general. Uh, it's still... It's just starting to pick back up. Like, everything... At, you know, basically, like, right before Christmas yeah. till about Fuck now, you, it's January. just kind of drags. Yep. Yeah. Um... But That's we're everything. starting to get more. Nintendo's put out a couple stuff. Uh, they did the Labo thing just recently. Um, like, what, a week, week and a half, two weeks? <laughs> yeah, like two weeks ago, I think. Where you can, like, uh, which, I mean, th they promised to break the internet. Or someone said that it would break the internet. Someone <laughs> I, someone tweeted that. I don't remember who. <laughs> the only thing you'll uh, be breaking is your cardboard boxes that you spent right. $80 on. That's uh, right. Uh, I mean, yeah, you get to create little cardboard things and stick the controllers in them. Uh, I mean, it looked like it's way more geared at kids, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was what, pretty much what they said. It? it was for kids and those with the heart of kids. Yeah. Would you guys so, ever buy that? Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> no. no. They are putting I, the stencils the on The robot mine. thing looks cool, the little backpack. I'm curious to see what all they're going to do with it. Yeah. Well, they also announced today that they're going to have... Um, programming so you can make your own only yeah, uh, simple if then um programming yeah. but you can like make your own like whatever um and then they also uh, nintendo also announced that they're doing mario kart for mobile by yeah. the end of 2019 that'll uh if it's anything like mario the other mario game what is then it'll suck oh yeah oh. or whatever it was called yeah it was not great yeah it did not it did not meet their sales expectations, unlike Fire Emblem Heroes. Yeah. Just blew it out of the water. Dude, all they gotta do is gotcha stuff with yeah. uh, Mario Kart. <laughs> just do carts God. and characters and just put a <laughs> shit ton of Nintendo <laughs> characters in the like game. Like, they could do just, like, short tracks that would be kind of cool. Yeah. 
like you know online actual racing ants. I have people. a feeling it won't be that. It'll be basically like if you ever played like Hill Climb Racer or any of that dumb stuff like that. Nope. <laughs> it's just like a side scrolling. Like you oh. have this much gas. Keep holding right and collecting the gas cans and the coins. Good yeah, I, I assume it'll be some sort of infinite runner, if not yeah. you know, actual Mario Kart. And then uh, they also announced that their the, uh, Nintendo Switch Online launches in September. Yeah, I saw that too. Um, I think the best comment I saw that summed it up is that the Switch is doing so well that it will uh, carry another mediocre Nintendo Online service. <laughs> Uh, oh God, it's I like four bucks some for one month, twelve no, for th- no that doesn't sound right. Eight maybe eight for three and um, twenty for twelve. You know, yeah. a year. So not a lot, and I think they're gonna have. And they did say that you're gonna be able to get some games. Maybe they'll uh, launch virtual console then too, right? That'd be nice. One could Actually, hope. Those games. I'm doubtful that they'll do it at this point, just because. Yeah. The classic consoles are selling so well. I hope they do, though, because I've played a little bit of my SNES Classic, but I'd rather much have those games on the Switch. And right, play them portability and all that, too. Yeah, exactly. I would agree with that, hands down. Plus, as, I mean, you I mean, you stole it from your mouth, but the portability, the ability to, like, take my SNES games around or, like, my NES ones would be so fucking awesome. Yeah. yeah. I would, I would pay for them again. I would love the ability to like. I would love to be able to buy F Zero, uh, and then take that around and yep. play that wherever I go. <laughs> that would be so. It's fun. great on the classic. Um, that's the other good thing about that model too, though, is that buying all the carts always better than getting a, a jumble because you can at least yeah. just get the stuff you want. Yeah. Um, God of War got its announced date. Oh, yeah, finally. It did. Oh, yeah. 420. Oh, my God. <laughs> Blaze it. Blaze it. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the memes. They live. That's actually, I know you were mentioning it um, about upcoming games with release dates, and that's probably my next one, Obs. Uh, what are you talking about? Probably I'll the next pro- one I'll, I'll play I can it. think of buying. I'll, I don't even know if I'll buy it right off. I won't buy it right off the bat, probably. Unless I just get, like, super hot with what they show until then. Yeah, the latest trailer was pretty cool. Showed off some more stuff story stuff okay i haven't seen the latest I, one i probably will pick it up pretty soon after it yeah. drops. i do want to play it i've never played a god of war either but this one just i played the I'm first one way, way back when uh, i think I've, I've not played three but i've played all the others <laughs> uh and that got a release date and then uh we also got delays oh, yeah. yep <laughs> Bioware, well, Bioware said that it's not a delay, but Anthem will not be uh, <laughs> we released never announced until it. 2019. It's a delay. Yeah, Fuck it. yeah, that's what it is. It's obviously yeah. a delay. We were but talking I about think this. It, it would have to be by, I, I heard them say it probably would have to be by like the end of March, I think, 2019, because mm-hmm. that's the end of their fiscal year. No. Oh. Um... And then Rockstar also delayed Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, that was all over Twitter today. Yeah. That's surprising. I'm actually excited for RDR 2. I basically expect big games to get delayed at this point. Yeah, it it never, like, depresses me. After living through the greatest game of all time's delay over and (laughs) over and over again. After dealing with Kingdom Hearts, everything else is just like, oh, but the little baby. (laughs) I I have absolutely no problem waiting through delays if it means that they're getting all the kinks out. Exactly. That's how I feel as well. Yeah. What is that one quote? Um, About a a rush game being uh, bad forever or something, and, you know, delayed games. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember. Um. Also, it was announced that uh, Monster Hunter, I thought about leading with this just because it would have been funny, um, <laughs> because, but uh, they have shipped over 5 million copies, just phys- this is just physical, yeah, which is not to say sold to <laughs> everyone, but I mean, as far as Capcom, the publisher is concerned, they've already got their money. Yep. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah. Yeah. They, uh, which, they, didn't that break some records? 
I mean, it's basically like it, it's the biggest it, Monster Hunter of all time already. Yeah, I mean. it ended up being one of their biggest games ever. Like this is just the f- first week, right? Yeah. Um, it's There's already been a lot of want for it here in the West. I mean, yeah. Well, even in Japan, it sold um, one point. Oh, well, it said more than one point three five copies sold in Japan of physical copies, and. Um, Someone, uh, Famatsu, I think, or something, uh, estimated it's probably actually closer to like over two million once you factor in like actual sales and digital sales. Mm-hmm. And there's about six million um, PS4s in Japan, so you know that's like a third of all yeah. PS4 yeah. users in Japan. Jeez. Well, Monster Hunter's huge over there, though. You know. Yeah. But uh, it's just it's selling like amazing. I mean, they actually advertised this one, and it's on a console. <laughs> yeah, I think like, that's I the biggest killer. So friends. many advertise or like so. I saw it on commercials. Like it was great. Actual TV commercials for it. Switch port. Yeah, we'll see. Probably not though. Yeah. It's a shame that they uh, PC players are going to have to wait so long for uh, the yeah. port. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but that'll be even more sales. Yep. Like it's just yeah, it's gonna I, be easily the. Uh, the most a Monster Hunter game has ever sold before was still was like four and a half million, I think. Jeez, and that's so, combined. Like total yeah. sales. That's that's pretty yeah insane. lifetime sales. So I mean, Cap, this might be Capcom's new baby. Oh, yeah. I would think so. I know. I know. There's definitely people waiting out for the PC version as well, who are specifically oh, just. Waiting. There's. I mean, there's people that I've seen on like the subreddit talking about how they're just gonna have to get both. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, that's. I, as silly as it sounds, I'm gonna end up probably being in that camp because I have friends <laughs> on both yeah, platforms, right. Same. and it sucks. I want to play with them. Uh, I want to play with. I everybody. don't know if my computer can run it. I don't. That sucks. No. <laughs> um. Yeah, but it's crap. Calm. They'll find a way to mess it up. Right. Yeah, they always I'm, do. I'm a Don't little you do bit, this to me, Ops. Don't you I, do this to I me. I am a little bit concerned because they have been known to I, kind of drop the ball on they, their ports. If I trust any company less than anyone, no, Capcom is the lowest. Who got really? Yeah. Really? For, that I can think ports, of off the top yeah. of my head. Not even, for ports, even, just in general oh. as a game even, company. Even better nah, than, even EA. worse than LGN. See, I don't LGN? even know who they are. So LGN they had no rapport with me in the first place. LJN was a um Oh no, I know you're talking about the rainbow <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't I don't think they exist anymore, man. Uh, they don't exist anymore. <laughs> I don't think they do. I, th- I think the uh, ET game ruined them or they might have been behind that. Oh no, they were they were behind by a lot of games that were really bad. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, hmm. I also saw um with just in the realm of sales that the uh, Dragon Ball uh fighters uh, sold two million. Nice. Yeah. Which has basically outsold everything else uh, Arc System Works has ever made. Yeah. Eat shit, Marvel. Yeah, but this game deserved <laughs> it. Works. Yeah. This game really it's deserves real it. good. It is. It's amazing. Yeah, I haven't even real. played the game, and I'm throwing praise it, at it's this. It's so thing. good. It's so good. Especially if you <laughs> like uh, if you like Dragon Balls that you watched it growing up at all. It's. I was saying this a little bit on the last episode of the intro, but it's one of the more accessible fighting games I've ever played, which yeah. is what makes it really enjoyable to me. It's always nice to hear games we love do well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it's good to have a good DBZ fighting game in general. Yeah? Yeah, it's not Budokai. <laughs> I yeah. love Budokai, though, actually. <laughs> I like the yeah, first one. I didn't. The fir- uh, I like the first and the second. After the first couple, it started. I don't yeah. remember how many I actually played. Yeah, I There's just liked it just because I like playing through the story. It went from yeah. like Budokai to Tenkaichi, and I'm sitting here. I'm like, whatever fucking happened to the fighting game? Why am I playing an RPG? That's <laughs> 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 what oh happened. My God. <laughs> I know. <laughs> also, Android 21 again. She the Wafu. Oh, uh, yeah. She went from, uh, what was it? She, like, somebody put a post out there like this, but it had a side-by-side picture of her in her regular form and then her Majin form. And uh-huh. it's like, she goes from like, hello, yes, it's nice to meet you, ma'am, to your son calls me mommy, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was perfect. That's great. 
Um, what else we got? Uh, uh, oh, right. The uh, Dragster speedrun. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. pretty big in the gaming community, especially, well, the speedrun community, obviously. Obviously. Yeah, and everybody's uh, been talking about, like, cheating and, like, transparency yeah. and, like, coming together as a community. Right, because mm-hmm. uh, Twin Galaxies stripped Todd Rogers of all his records, actually, um, because, and it, it, I guess it, they, like, found out, uh, like, basically he was just having his friends confirm his records, or he yes. would just even just add his own records, because, you know, record keeping back in the 80s or whatever was not great. No, it was not. Yeah. Like, it was, like, it's... all Polaroid-based and stuff. Yeah, and I find it funny that <laughs> the whole controversy is even surrounding Twin Galaxies, because no one even really uses them <laughs> anymore, yeah. other than, like, if you want to be in, like, the Guinness Book World Records, because they yeah. don't, like, allow glitches and stuff like that for their records. Yeah, well, uh, mm-hmm. he... Yeah, he had the uh, record from 1982 with a time because it's just it's a simple like dragster racing game right Uh and uh he had the time of 5.51 seconds and basically everyone has like kind of known he was cheating because no one else could even come close and recently someone took apart the code and uh found out it was actually just impossible yeah (laughs) hmm yeah, yeah. But, I think I think what's funniest about it is like when you read up some of the articles on it. Um, uh, for those who don't like know, uh, the guy behind it achieved a, a time of like what was it, five point fifty one on yeah. uh, the game Dragster, and apparently like even the developers were surprised because they had simulated a maximum fast, uh, like fastest speed of like five point five four. So yep. you know how do you beat the simulation of a game that's otherwise really super simple? Yeah, and then even. Uh... Uh, tool assisted runs could only get 5.57 yeah. which yeah. other actual people have gotten um, and never any lower so yeah yep. now he's just they just stripped him of all his stuff he'll be an outcast just like I mean it's not the first or the last time someone tried to cheat on a speed run for whatever right. reason I, I mean yeah now it's even harder um and then uh, Octopath uh, released like uh, an update. Yeah, it was so devs, good. Had a video. I got yeah. the feels so bad. I want they that had game. Over, uh, they had over a million downloads from their demo and nearly fifty thousand survey entries. They're they listening actually, to feedback. Like, yeah, like a lot of it. Yeah, like they really? said they went over every survey entry, and yeah, because now you can run faster, you can fast travel. Mm-hmm. They adjusted the design so like certain things stand out better and just you know like yeah. the colors don't feel as flat. This it's easier I to always, walk around environments and see yourself and stuff like that. I yeah. am always glad to hear when they release out a demo, take the feedback from somebody and say we're right? gonna do all these changes that you guys are talking about and they're good changes. Yeah, they uh <laughs> they made it less easy to accidentally overwrite your save, which apparently was the thing. <laughs> um, they adjusted text size, streamlined the UI, made skipping cutscenes av- always uh, big available, which should always be a thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that why it's not before. That, that is start of your s. That is a that is a SOP basic. Okay, yeah. you, when you when you when you make a game, every cutscene should be skippable. There should never be a point where it's like, no, nah, you can't skip it. And then yeah, they also adjust some like gameplay balance. But yeah, it's great to hear that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And. Yeah, I wonder. They don't. Is there still not a release date for it, right? No. Nope. I wonder if they'll u- release an updated demo. I'm kind of hoping for that. I hope I'd rather so. try to. I would hope. I would like to play an updated demo. Yeah, that'd be cool. With two two of the other characters, that would be pretty sweet. I'm, I'm definitely looking more and more forward to it as you know they keep coming out with more of it. Yep. And uh, more devs listening to their fans. Um, Rainbow Sie- uh, Six Siege from Ubisoft had uh, showed up in the news because, uh, because it's been out for two years, basically. Um, it came out at the end of 2015. Mm-hmm. And there is, like, a $15 starter pack for a PC um, where you can, like, grind out. You get, like, all the maps and stuff, but you have to, like, grind out the characters. Mm-hmm. And then there's a $40 standard edition for everyone. They're all, like, the other normal systems. And they wanted to, which has all the characters unlocked, uh, they were going to remove that option and then make it sixty dollars, 
which had some, which was the the forty dollar version of the game, and like some loot packs. Wow. Yeah. Which are you know are your loot boxes or whatever you want to call yeah. them. Included, yeah, like ten of those. So the community was not pleased and voiced their opinions, and Ubisoft listened. Did they like, listen okay. like EA listened? No, they're like, <laughs> okay, we're just not going to do this. That's $40 good. will not go away. I don't know if you have that on your list or not, Mel. Uh The EA which? Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh, the fact that loot boxes are back? Yeah. No, I only just saw, like, that's all I know about it. Yeah. So they're adding them back. I mean, we knew this was going to happen. Yeah, I don't it's, think they yeah, never said it was permanent. Anybody. Yeah, they weren't. We knew it was going to happen. I think they're just waiting for a lot of the heat to die down. Yeah, definitely. Um, but it's nice to see you know Ubisoft listening. Uh, yeah. They also said they were going to uh, make it easier to unlock the operators because it was it's apparently a bit of a grind on the like when you have the fifteen dollar PC version. Mm -hmm. uh, so they even said they're just going to lower that. That's good to hear. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, if you want to make any money on your game, you better listen to your consumers. Right. They, yeah, they just they posted on the subreddit. They're like, yeah, we have heard the feedback and have adjusted it to not have to do this. <laughs> yeah, thing. to not be that. So they also, I think, announced some like more advanced, like like uh, like advanced versions and stuff. That yeah. Have like all the season pass stuff and I guess in it, mm -hmm. but. They're not getting rid of the forty dollars version, which you know, for they're not making a two year old game back up to like full price, basically. Yeah. yeah I believe that's a probably a smart move. Yeah. And then yeah, we man. also um, we also got, you know, a different version of devs and uh you know, dealing with their communities. Uh Destiny released a roadmap finally, uh with like actual dates on it and stuff today or yesterday, I guess, at the time of recording. Um and it detailed like four big patches. Well, one that had released when like when they dropped the roadmap. It was the first patch, um, addressing like a bunch of concerns. But unfortunately, like the biggest change, which is like it just the overall sandbox of the game needs to be better and like you know a reason to keep playing. What is not being like they're not touching that and or like it won't get released until the end of March. So it's still like seven months after the release before anything major major changes yeah which people are like this is still pretty long to wait on the game i'm already disappointed with <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it was a lot of information they're finally you know being you know maybe more transparent and actually communicating with their community uh-huh so we'll see like they're adding a 6v6 but it's only for iron banner right now at least like because the Destiny One had six v six in the uh, multiplayer, but in Destiny One or Two, they cut it down to four v four, and mm. it has not been well received by the community. And apparently, it was actually a big like internally, it was like caused issues because I don't think a lot of people agreed on it what it should be. But I guess like you know whoever got the vinyl say made it four v four. Um. Yeah, and then they're also not addressing like the other big thing I saw people complaining about was the prestige version of the of the raid, and it's not going to be out till May when the next DLC also hits. Jeebus. So yeah, it's not like that's a long time a, for a new raid. Yeah, yeah that's a, a long time. Well, this is just the prestige mode of an already existing raid. Oh, oh god. Oh. Yeah, it's even worse. Right, and Whoa. like they're, they're they're adding in like some because like uh. Raid armor in the first game had like unique perks that, um, you know, applied to the raid, and in this one they got rid of all that, and people are like, "There's no reason to even like collect the raid armor now." So hmm. and so they're actually addressing that, but so like, it's nice to see that they're kind of like you know working towards this now, but it still might be too little, too late for a lot of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That is all I have found from the last week. That's a lot more news than it honestly sounds like it's happened. <laughs> Jeez, uh... It's been lots of little stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's fine, though. We're... Yeah. No, I need scandal. I need big scandal. 
Hold on, let me just make a game and put loot boxes in it. Scandal <laughs> achieved. Bioware announces that Anthem is going to have nothing but loot boxes. It's the only way to progress. You want to go on a mission? Buy a loot box to see what mission you're going on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I can't even play with my friends. They didn't get the mission I have. You gotta buy a loot box to see what friends you got. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. You get access to like their uh, IDs or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for for the friend DLC, it'll even provide one oh free friend. My God. <laughs> <laughs> our, our hat tits. What do you got to that? Uh, on that note, uh, um, I realized that I have not been watching as much anime as I used to. Um. Um, or reading manga like and not for any particular reason i don't think i just kind of like noticed it and i was thinking about it and i realized that to a degree there are a few tropes that i am as interested in i guess as the way that the uh um the media and the uh, uh the industry is kind of going right now and I was curious if there was any like tropes that you guys are just totally fed up with and just want to see just gone. I know what from... Miles is, and, and not not just from anime and manga, but you know, video games, movies, you know, whatever. If there's a trope that just really gets on your nerves, I know what, what Miles is. It is. What is I it? I know what it is. It's the dense male protagonist who doesn't no, know the girl likes him, right? Nope, you're wrong. Oh Denied. man, denied. I thought I had it. Nope, nope. You're wrong. What it's, is it, Mal? Hey, check out this new fantasy, whatever. Or <laughs> is it a fan or this new fantasy <laughs> manga or anime? And I'm like, oh god, does the main character get die and end up in this world, or get sucked is into it a video an game? Because it's always that now. <laughs> <laughs> always. My, Mal's Why? fed up with the isekai trope. Yes. Yeah, it sounds. It sounds like there are too many of them. It sounds I, like what you need is more virtual game world stuff. See, That's what you I need. I like that trope, but it was only recently opened to my my eyes were open to the fact of how many there are right now. Yeah, there's I a ton. I didn't realize how many there are right thank, now. Like, thanks, Sword Art Online. Oh yeah. Like whenever Sword I Online check really out like it. new like top new manga, it's like all anything fantasy based is that now. Yeah, because don't you know that fantasy worlds themselves are boring and dull, but if you put it in a virtual game world, it's really cool and fun. It's got like or video game who rules. Has the knowledge of our world and can, you know, be awesome at this other world. People yeah. die in the game, they die in real life, man. It's insane. Uh, I kind of enjoyed Gate, though. I mean, that was its whole premise. But who doesn't like military members shooting at dragons? <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying there aren't good ones, I'm just saying there's <laughs> no, no. Yeah, I know. Konosuba is the <laughs> best well, isekai. Would, well, there are like 50,000 of them. What would you do to call this call this plague that is sweeping our nation a virtual? <laughs> <laughs> what can he do? Right. He's but a, one I man. but a man. <laughs> <laughs> you have to enter a isekai virtual world yeah, you're where you walk up world. <laughs> all the mangaka who, and light novel authors who come up with these tired ass tropes and do like <laughs> Mortal Kombat with them. Oh my and then we'll God. turn it into a 24 episode shonen <laughs> isekai anime light novel adaptation and get A1 That's pictures right. to do it for us. That's right. And then and then after about a year's time we'll probably uh double down for a second season and then we'll leave it on a cliffhanger which uh they'll never really truly get uh, any more traction. And then the main character will get a gun cuz yes. guns are edgy and cool and hip. They're right really now. cool. They'll have like a lightsaber thing, and there'll be like a guy who looks like Reaper from uh, that game that everybody <laughs> likes. Everybody likes that game that that guy Reaper's from. Yeah, I know. It's got that league now. <laughs> There's a lot of them that'll also be like a group of people from our world end up in this other one. One of them, and then basically the main character has like this weird job that's frowned upon or something like that, like uh, or like commoner, and it ends up being super OP. Yeah. Yeah, just like but, you know, what, the spinoff of that I don't like that's was in a lot of stuff after uh, Magical Index was the my ability is to cancel everyone else's ability. Uh, the it's 
like there was like a string of crap where it was literally like that was the main guy's power uh, yeah, and everything. I don't think I've, yeah, I never saw any of those. I do like magical uh, index. Yeah, it's not bad. Though they spun seen. off a lot of those. Yeah. Because there's a certain scientific railgun, and then how does one I kill whatever uh, accelerators is? Yeah. <laughs> how does one kill him? <laughs> Shit. Right, what, I I do not I do not blame you for wanting to see those kind of go away. Um, I just want they, more variety in my manga, mostly. I mean, I don't watch it now. Of now wants to read a bunch of more manga and not have to deal with this, this I, trope anymore. I'm a, right. I've. I mean, I'm a, probably only reading like five of them. Yeah, it's still. It would be nice to like see some variety because I mean, you you are right. Like, look, I, I'm like an actual serious note. I have even I've noticed it, and I don't like follow new manga at all. But even I've noticed that there's an ass load of like gone to a virtual world or I've woken up in another world or I have to go to this other world or in some shape or form, I or a group of people end up at point a world, which is our world to point B world, which is some made up world. Right. There's a lot out there. They're just, it's just all out there. It's saturated the market. Yep, and we're getting another season of Sword Art Online here in See. like two months. Oh my god! Manga on. updates. What's new? Can I make it through the first page? <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> no. No. Uh. Oh no. What? What is that? Number one, two, three, four, five down. This is all popularity. Losing his memories, the curtains of the story of alternate world transferred to the main character. After oh, the transfer, his name changes to Kelvin. While steadily leveling. It's got both? Oh my god. This just sounds miserable. He adds the new subordinates by mastering his skill. And that by the time he noticed it, he has obtained overwhelming power. Where will our MC be heading off? <laughs> oh my god. Alright, well, oh my god. I'm gonna go next because mine's like a play on yours, basically. Mine is the uh, lot, lot novel hero guy. Or as TV Tropes calls it, the stock lot novel hero. So, so okay. basically, your your Kiritos of the world, the uh, <laughs> the stock shonen hero. Uh, I I like this little sum up of a ton of uh, other various tropes. He's typically hot blooded, book dumb, starts off at the lower end of the power level food chain. The stock lot novel protagonist, typically an unfazed everyman, genius bruiser, deadpan snarker, or stoic badass, except when he isn't, with power, skill, or moral character that puts most other characters to shame. Further, very few shonen heroes are a chick magnet, typically uh, only have one serious love interest. Lot novel hero commonly gains a harem wander otherwise without fail. He's always an ordinary high school oh, student, yeah. a neat or ridiculously average guy with medium length dark hair and soft facial features. Even a fantasy setting, he'll probably be an attendee of some extra normal institute. <laughs> so that's uh, your like a. Uh, that is disgustingly on point. Yeah, it is. It's that the extra normal institute is like your uh uh oh god the arc uh war whatever. Ugh, I can't think. There's always that like we're like fantasy magical guys in like a high school setting thing or whatever. <laughs> and it's he, there's all they always have. They're always lot novel adaptations. And they always have the same generics like character <laughs> in all of them. Um, is it wrong to try and pick up girls in a dungeon? That main character fills a lot of those. Yes, he does. <laughs> it's also originally a light novel. So I was yeah. about to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Light, light novel, novel hero is a different type of wish fulfillment that can easily replace a mundane slice of life story. They are a very common protagonist for an isekai plot. Isekai means other world. <laughs> so there you go. That's my most hated. Like, if I just hear something's lot novel adaptation, I just don't want to watch it <laughs> immediately. <laughs> That's how like turned off I am by this trope. Oh man, that uh, I think I had like a, I might have just transcended the mortal form when you ran through <laughs> you had that pit, list. Epiphany, <laughs> <laughs> yes, like I was like, wow. <laughs> he's got the badass. He's got his badass long coat, man. It's disgustingly. He got that sweet the... loot off that drop, man. It's that it, he sniped that from across the planet. Three sixty no scope. That two swords. The skill isn't even in the game, man. He somehow has it. <laughs> <laughs> it makes that makes no sense. I want to rant about sword online <laughs> one day. That's how we'll get like instantly a thousand subscribers. Instant thousand on YouTube. God. 
right. you know, um, yeah, go on, Meta. Like, what do you got? I don't have well, I don't have those. You know what? I do have. I am tired of seeing uh, dead animals getting killed, uh, as pets getting killed. I want. Oh. I'm tired of. Like, um, no more die, dead dogs. No more <laughs> dead dogs. I'm, Can I am you not tired watch of, uh, Full Metal Alchemist ever again? Uh, no, I the girl Alchemist who gets killed. No, Full Metal also it doesn't matter to me. Uh, <laughs> And a immediately, immediately negative thousand subscribers. <laughs> oh. Um, actually, that scene never really bothered me. Like, it was never like, oh, horrible. Although, I mean, like, it is tragic. Don't get me wrong. But it was like, um, no, I just, I'm tired of seeing this. And, like, this isn't really an anime thing specifically. But, like, in a lot of movies or even shows, they always have, like, some animal. They'll introduce the animal at some point of the show. And it generally coincides with some, uh either with some creature showing up or being a focal point, and it almost always inevitably and invariably ends up with the animal dying in some shape or form. I just get so tired of that. I'm like, you're killing... You killed the animal, but it had no purpose. Like, oh, you're trying to tell me that this monster's evil. Well, fuck, yeah. You didn't need to kill the cat off to tell me that. <laughs> I just... I, I don't I don't understand why they do that. I, it's, I mean, it, like, it triggers you, Meta. With, um, uh... It does... Yes, like with Strangers Within is a perfect example, actually, of exactly what I just said. Creature shows up. They want to show that the creature is definitely not, like, safe to be around. Kills the no cat. No reason to kill Mr. Muse. Yes, kills the cat. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> um, kills the cat off. And I'm just like, why? What was the purpose of that? We already know it's going to be evil. We already know it's going to probably attack people and hurt somebody, which well, it does. Point, but at that point, hadn't it already attacked people? Like, it was already no. established this thing. Well, at least they had known, like, where it was from. They had, they knew its, its like, lineage at that yeah. point. There was no reason to kill the cat there. That was, no. that's, no reason. Absolutely. And that's, like, that's just what it comes down to is, like, I mean, it, there wasn't a point where they attacked anybody earlier, at least for that series anyway. I mean, there might be other series where they've done stuff like this. <clears throat> but, I mean, it's just, like, I remember this old movie, and it was on um, the Old Testament, uh, and it was about, uh, I, which city, I can't remember, but the city was going to get burned. They were bringing it down and everything because of all the debauchery happening on. And the one family was told, like, go, don't, don't look back or you'll turn to stone and shit, Sodom but and go. Yeah. yeah. It might have been that. Yeah. And I remember specifically one scene Killers in there. Salt. That that's probably what it is. I, I was just a kid at the time, so I don't remember what the hell it was. Um, but I remember seeing it. I was watching this uh, as I was going. I was just kind of standing. I was like watching from the kitchen because I was grabbing something to eat. And I remember it panned over as like meteors are falling from the sky and landing on the town. And it pans over to a scene where rats are on fire. I'm like. Why the fuck are they showing me rats like being killed off in the street? I'm like, why? people are You're dying. Why are we? Kid. Why are, people are dying? Why are we focusing on the fucking rats? I just, I don't. <laughs> I'm like, you don't need to. You don't need to sell that to me. I already know people are. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, but, but it's going to set some people over the edge. They're even more innocent than the humans. I, that's that's really what it comes down to too. Is that like I I personally. Also, I'm just very sensitive to animals when they get killed off because, um, I mean, first off, the major, like I said, the major reason is that for me, it's just like there's no purpose. There's way better re characters you could kill off because, like I said, if you bring in the animal, the animal has no character. He has no, like, point of the plot. He's just, he's just a corpse. He's just a, a what walking corpse. What if the animal corpse. is the main character, though? See, then that's different, though, because at least they build to it. But at the same time, <laughs> then I think to myself, old yeller. And then there's a trope of a lot of animals dying, like I am legend. Oh, but at yeah. Least that, but at least That's in sad. that you're, one... You're emotionally invested in yes. that. Yes. In that, in that movie, though, you have emotional investment. Even in the book, you have emotional investment to the, uh, the dog because the fucking dog is a character. It's just when they kill off something that has no purpose to be killed off, especially an animal, to specifically evoke the emotion of, oh, that's terrible. I can't believe they would do it to such an innocent creature. That's the that's, whole point in John the so Wick. So you're saying or you John hate Wick, Whoobies. Uh, I, I guess <laughs> so. I don't know what Whoobies are. I don't it, know what that is. I'm, it's a bad joke. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> the Whoobie, the tro the whoobie uh, trope is the character that's always, like, downtrodden upon. For, like, oh, no, for, like uh, no reason. For no reason at all. For no reason Eeyore. at all. Your soccer is, if you will. Uh, yeah, so that's that's my trope. I'm just tired of seeing uh, animals get murdered off 
like for no reason other than to build suspense or tension um when it could have been done probably in other ways without needing to murder the animal you just want better rotting that's what you want there's literally a fucking website out there called does the dog die i believe that's the name of the website and it literally tells you it literally tells you does the animal die in the movie i think this one's called does the dog die we'll say does the dog die yes here it is does the dog die it's, <laughs> it's in the movie you can go mm. on to it and you uh, can just look it up and it'll tell you trending shows it'll show you trending books it'll tell you trending movies and then it will tell you like does the animal die in there um it also tracks oh, yeah. other things but does um, the dog die does the cat die does the does horse the cat- die yes. are there bug snakes rats clown clowns, jump scares, jump scares strobe effects back? yeah does a car yeah. crash so it does more than that, but um, that is the name of the site, and it specifically was designed around the idea is like, does the dog die? Nice. So there you go. All right, Ted, <laughs> you got to answer your own question now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I So initially when I was thinking about it, I wanted to say slice of life anime, but I realized and recognized that that's more of a genre than a trope necessarily. Um, I am kind of done with the whole, the, like, just normal lives. We're gonna follow normal lives because I have one of those. I watch anime for all stuff. Um, but uh, I almost went with the by shown in line, which is just the whole idea of of like as something gains power, like it's you know think Cell or Frieza from DBZ. You know they kind of have like these ugly forms, and then once they hit a certain power level, suddenly good looking humanoid features. Eisen. Yeah, but it's actually got to be, for me, combining Mecha. I don't know why, but once I see that in some, you know, usually in anime more so than anything else, but once, like, Mecha start combining, like, Voltron or the Megazords, it just turns me off, because it's, like, practical sense but does Gurren not make. Lagon. But so Gurren Lagann is, is like <laughs> making fun of that though. I know. Like, <laughs> they're subverting it. <laughs> so maybe he just rips the head off of one yeah. of them and shoves it on top of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the whole uh, point of the story is, or the whole like, I guess the foundation of the, the whole universe is built on is kick reality to the curve. Yeah. So, <laughs> You are the like, drill that the pierces the heavens. It's meant to spiral out of control. As it, oh, as it oh, my God. I don't think that's entirely as punny as you guys took that to be. <laughs> no, it, no, it is. It's like, I'm, I'm taking I it. I said it because going. that is literally the theme. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, spiral it's energy. It's not a joke. Yeah. Like, that's but it is thing. also a joke. Right. Right. Um, but no, like... In in the case of, like, Voltron and Megazords, I guess, just because they're the first go-tos that I have in my mind for combining Mecha, a lot of times you have, like, like each of them are, like, controlling their own thing, and then when it forms together, you have the guy that controls the right arm, the guy that controls the left arm, I'm controlling the foot. And it's like, how do you coordinate fighting maneuvers in that go- You know, like, okay, right foot, step forward now, this far, left foot. You, you know, like, you just... I mean, how do you coordinate any fighting in anime? Yeah, but it's just at the makes... speed of light. It's it completely like... breaks Tetz's. Uh, it's one thing when it's like shown it. Yeah, exactly. Because like it was shown in. Okay, whatever. Like the the powers are already there. I just kind of attribute it to you know being able to recognize and respond. But when it's supposed to be like a tech thing, and it's like suddenly I'm supposed to believe that they all know what each other are thinking to or like I don't know. It just makes no sense to me in this part. Like. Well, I mean, usually they get stronger when they're combined, right? Yeah, and, and that I can get, but then it's like, what, is one guy piloting and the other four are just kind of, like, sitting in the back twiddling their thumbs? I mean, sometimes, like, you'll see, like, the, the other four are, like, monitoring systems and whatnot, and that I'm more okay with, you know? It's like, this guy's, con- you know, watching coolant levels, this guy's watching the reactor power output, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That, that I'm more okay with, but when it's, like, you have this part of controlling the mech, you have this part of controlling, it just... Doesn't, doesn't feel like it makes enough sense to me to, to why we use it as much as it has been used. <laughs> I guess. Well, everybody spam Tetsuo with uh, Bekazord memes now. You got it. I'm already finding them right now. You, you know what to do. 
Because <laughs> it's a giant mecha, and we need more giant mecha in this world. <laughs> I can be sad about it at the same time. <laughs> no, you get little, I can cry little, little in my whiskey mecha. and drink it at the same time. Little bitty small mecha. Yar. All right. Well, there's our tropes. Yeah. Man, so many, though. You might love them, but we hate them. And I love all of them. So many tropes, just in general. Well, while you guys do the rest of this episode, I'm going to go get lost in TV tropes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm don't! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, Quick, God. Meta! State your topic before I get lost! No! My topic is... Uh, yeah, right. So, too I want to talk about... So I want to talk about uh, games specifically because you know we don't. I don't think we talk about them enough. No, we don't. And uh, <laughs> no, I want. I I was thinking about. Um, uh, you know, be really cool to see some games come back that I haven't seen in a long time. And I want to know what you guys also think. Is that what would be a game from a series that hasn't had like anything really done with it, truly done with it? That's pretty old that you haven't seen anymore. What's a series that you would love to see come back? Let y'all go for it. Yeah. Somebody well, I would say Breath of Fire, but <laughs> apparently having a crappy MMO mobile game that didn't come outside of anywhere or didn't leave Japan disqualifies it. Well, I didn't say it was disqualified. I did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Breath that, of Fire, Mel? I mean, I would really like more Breath of Fire, like actual turn-based it's not Breath of Fire 5 either. Like Breath of Fire 1 through 4 type stuff. Uh, screw that nah. game. Yeah. But I get an act like even to follow your 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 rules or whatever, I will say Jet Set Radio. But because I mean... They that one hasn't come out with anything. I mean, the last actual game to come out was in 2002. Yeah, that would be definitely yeah. more than seven years old. I would definitely like another one of those, please. Man. I love everything about um, Jet Set Radio. The design, the I... uh, the music. Oof. Please understand the concept of love. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have talked about the concept of love at least I once never... or twice before on this podcast. I've never played that game um, before at all. I never got the appeal of it. Oh, it's so good. I'm very sorry for your loss, Meta. Yeah, apparently. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was. I, oh. I agree with Mao on this one. Like, that's. I did play, uh, what was it, Hover, I think I reviewed. Yeah. And that was pretty fun. It, it had some of the same charm, but was missing some of the stuff that just really made Jet Set Jet Set. Like, I would love to see them come back and do it again. But I don't know that they could, because to be honest, it was a very quintessential late 90s early 2000s game i don't you know, know. retro is a thing it is. no no no. absolutely it is and, and, and i can see it working from that, that that standpoint it's not doing necessarily anything new as much as a throwback if that makes sense i don't know if that so, makes sense it's, i need yeah, a new tony I, to, I need a new tony hawk pro skater too <laughs> i'm just joking. specifically that <laughs> just the that second one. one, not the first one, the not any of those. That came the first, afterwards. the second, and the third one were the good ones. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. 2. 2. two. Yeah, 2 was the one I played the most. The though. sequel. I actually I remember playing the, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater games so much. I enjoyed the crap out of them. Yeah, I loved so them. Fine. They're oh, not, they are not easy to go back and replay, let me tell you. No, uh, they're probably not. But their soundtracks were wonderful. Yeah, they are. Oh, man. So good. I still actually sometimes will find some of the songs I remember from. Yeah, I'll the listen game to them every to once them. in a while, too. <laughs> I'm the same way. Got me running in a sock of them. Beep, 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 oh, beep, 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 beep. Stuff like that. Oh, man. Ah, uh, some good music. Yeah, it's hitting the nostalgia feels. Yeah, the last one of that came out in 2015. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it's probably hardly the same franchise anymore. No, it's it's not like I think they've changed up a lot. They they kept expanding on it, and as any game does, but it I don't think the the games nowadays are anything like is uh, akin to beyond the skating part of it for what the games originally were. Is Tony Hawk even relevant anymore? 
Um, he's I like mean, fifty now or something. Yeah, I mean, at some point it becomes like the Tom Clancy of skateboarding games, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Clancy's Rainbow uh, Six. He is, is wow. Ob, you are super close. He is forty nine years old right now. Oh wow, look at that. Nice. Got that yeah. ESP going on, man. He does yeah. have ESP going on. I I want to guess uh, Meta's. By ESPN? No, your game. ESP. No. Yes. Uh, is Meta's Bushido Blade? No, my Bushido Blade is uh, not <laughs> that. <laughs> no, my my game is going to be F Zero. I would. Oh honestly, man! Oh no! We need one. We need another one. one so bad. I know. The last I one we got was for GameCube. It. Last one was GameCube. It was F Zero Climax. Um, Two thousand four. Yeah. Well, actually, that the climax was actually for the GB8. That's how old it is. Um, but the last like console one, I believe, was like um, GX and AX. GP, oh. No, and GP GP was, GP was, GP was for, uh, GP Legend. GP Legend was for Advance as well. GBA. Yep. But um, that was a pretty sweet game. Although my favorite will forever, I think, be uh, F Zero X for the N sixty four. That I was mean, the only one of the series that I played. Oh, I mean, just like... You well, got boost at, power. Oh, I got a link of this, guys. It's like, even this box art. Look at this box art. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's magnificent. It's Magnum Opus is what it is. That is what that is right <laughs> Is there. that your favorite <laughs> racing series of all time, probably? Oh, yeah. Hands down, like, out of every racing series I've played, which, believe it or not, I've actually put a lot, um, F-Zero, like, just holds a special spot in my heart. I don't know why. Um, I just enjoy the game so much. I, I played that game. I got that for um, the virtual console, as we were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, got the virtual. I got that on the virtual console for the Wii, um, and never looked back. And I kind of wish I got it. I, I kind of wish they would do the virtual console for um, the Switch, so I could get it on that again as well. <laughs> Can rebuy all of them, man. Oh, dude, I would. And that. Me? I I hope they do the rumored GameCube uh games on there. <laughs> that would be on the so Switch. yeah, that would be so dope. Cuz we've never got to buy those online before. It all, it went up to N64 oh, and yeah. stopped every previous previous time. Uh no, t now Tony Hawk 2 was like a troll answer. My real answer is actually Bubsy. But they made a new Bubsy. Game oh my God! This year. No, so it's I not. Don't even it's not Bub, it can't give be Bubsy. Don't even tr give us yeah. the true one. This is not Troll Two Point Oh. The, tr the true, <laughs> the true one is I want another Chrono game. I want another Chrono oh, game so yeah. bad, so bad. Because Chrono Trigger, while not my favorite in the series, and that's a very con <laughs> controversial position, I, is a I lot of people's opinion as you. It's a lot of people's favorite Super Nintendo game of all time. One of the, their favorite JRPGs of all time. Right. Um, and I, I loved the game when I played it back in the day. Uh, I played Chrono Trigger probably like two years ago, I believe, and I love that game even more. It's amazing. Uh, Chrono Cross. Yeah, Chrono Cross. Uh, it has like probably my favorite video game soundtrack of all time. It um, is really good. The the really cool thing about Chrono Cross in particular. And Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross both have this kind of like going back and forth in time s kind of plot things. Time is a very big theme in the in the game series. Uh, the art's done by uh, Toriyama, Akira Toriyama from uh, the manga cut for Dragon Ball. And um, is it really? Yeah, yeah. Chrono Triggers is. Uh, oh yeah. Chrono yeah. Cross is Chrono Cross is more just like it, there was no like. I mean, I'm yeah, sure there was concept art, but it wasn't Akira Toriyama who did it. Um, and uh, the, the, the awesome thing about Chrono Cross is just all the different characters in the game that you can get. Yeah. Depending it's on... Like 50, I think? Yeah, it makes Holy the game shit. super you replayable. You can't get all of them. Like, yeah, you yeah. just can't get the, all of them. There are so many choices you can go back and redo in the game to get different characters that all play... I mean, fairly differently. They'll have like different stat lineups, different uh, elements that they favor, and stuff like that. They all have uh, really cool, interesting stories. Man, uh, the uh, the characters were done by the guy who did uh, Escaflowne or worked on Escaflowne. Oh, there you go. So a Sunrise Boy, but uh, Nobuteru Yuki. 
Nobuteru Yuki. But uh, no, I love Chrono Trigger. Uh, the music gives me the feels every time I, I I hear it. They the only bad thing is they kind of tried to shoehorn some like plot. Apparently, <laughs> uh, the um, <laughs> uh, Square was like, "You need to make this more related to Chrono Trigger." Oh yeah. So they tried to like they basically shoehorned in some of the other characters from the other game, like talking to them through time or something. Yeah. And, like, weird, weird, like, possible reincarnations of some of the characters from the previous well, yeah, game. They were going to straight up have, is it what is his name, Magus? Yes. And then they ended up redoing that. As and, a and Frog is uh, supposedly, uh, what's his name? Yeah, Glenn. Glenn, yeah. Glenn's my favorite character in the game. Yeah, he's pretty good. I had to make the decision to go with him. Because he's one of, there's, like, there's a point where you have to make uh, a decision between three characters. I think that all lead to different, you obtaining different characters. And... Yep. Yeah, one leads to he's on only one of the paths. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It also just it's a very like experimental series. It does weird stuff. Um, like uh, that was another reason people were just so turned off by Chrono Cross was just that it, it like even the gameplay was like just completely different because it was you had this weird magic thing on the screen. And if you got more of the same color, then magic of that color would be more powerful, and the opposite would be more weak. And it, like, doesn't really do a good job of explaining it to you, but when you figure it out, you're like, yeah, yeah! And man, you just, you just, you just yeah. feel great. Yeah, you turn into Donatello. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Yeah! So, man, yeah. I, I just want to... I just wanna, I would love to see another game. I like it when Square... Like with Final Fantasy XV and the greatest game of all time, mind you, uh, they they step out of the box a little bit, try some new stuff, uh, get a little bit creative there, and that's I a think, that's a really good series. I think a lot of people like to see come back. Having having only seen uh, looking at some of the character things on here, the best character is clearly Skelly. Um, <laughs> he's optional. He's the optional. <laughs> you don't like fun guy. No. I have like like half of these characters yeah. look really. Freaking a lot of people weird. like Carl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Maka, she uses a spoon. She hits you with a spoon. Uh, Lena's the wafu. And Leia, Korsha, Kid. Why are there like sometimes two? Oh yeah, Leia's same? Leia's from the uh, original game or uh, Chrono Trigger, I think, or sort of. There's Lu- Lucia's kind of like Luca, basically. Why? Why is there like Pip, Devil, Angel, Arc, Devil, Arc? Oh yeah, that's because uh, Pip has different forms. Ah, I see. There are, yeah. I think, uh, judging or from the, it looks like there are forty-five uh, characters. Yeah, man, the game's so good. Now I just want to go. <laughs> I want to replay it. <laughs> oh man. Zoa, Zappa, Viper. Yeah, dude, you need to play that game. God damn. All right. Let's get to my topic here. What? Whoa. whoa what? Whoa. What? Did I skip you? Whoa. You did. Yeah. I, I thought you I different. thought you said uh what Mal said. I agreed with that. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wow, Sudoku. You, you You'll have my Sudoku poem tomorrow. Plus plus 30 infamy. Uh yes. Sudoku on the spot. <laughs> Your whole family will whoa, have to whoa, also commit whoa, Sudoku whoa, as well. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going <laughs> to the choice, corner of shame. My choice to is Shadow Jet Realm. Set Radio. Gosh damn it. No, no. <laughs> damn you, <laughs> Ted. <laughs> damn it. Uh, actually, because I, I was joking with, with, with the guys when we were talking earlier, because I really want to say Armored Core, but I think we know that by now. Yeah, I was going to say um, that's a given. Plus, so, I think that's sooner than seven years. Yeah, it's probably sooner than seven years. Was it, I haven't looked because I decided I was going to try to stay as far away from that as I could. Um, <laughs> go with Twisted Metal, actually. Oh. And the, that kind of genre oh, yeah, of games, not, not just specifically Twisted Metal, but there was um, the Vigilante series, which is definitely a, just a Twisted Metal knockoff. They, they had a few of them. The um, latest Twisted Metal was 2012. Aha! You fail. You fail. Six years. Come on. <laughs> I go to pass. I go to pass. Because <laughs> uh, I didn't play that one. I didn't play PS3. Nobody played PS3. Who played PS3? What's PS3? 
<laughs> as I look over at my 30 PS3 games. <laughs> yeah. As I said, no one. Nobody uh, played it. Oh, Nobody um, likes yeah. PS3. Uh, I am I'm a dead joking. man walking, so. <laughs> we, we, we love you, Alex. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but Twist, like, I loved those games, which I guess it kind of is in a little bit the same vein of any other mecha games of you have a machine that's kitted out with a whole bunch of weapons and you run around trying to blow up all the other ones in the arena, but I don't know. I have a lot of positive memories of Twisted Metal. Yeah, I played a lot of it when I was a kid. I love those games. Yeah, I just, I mean, I don't really know exactly what you would do to it, like, modern day-wise, how to bring it up to, to current times, but... I would love to see them, you know, try that isn't the abomination that the 2012 game was. I was really yeah. into the story as a kid, oddly enough. <laughs> yeah. And they were really oh. dark, and I was like 10, like super oh, into I, these games. The game is all about, like, black humor and, yeah, like, dark the bad endings going on. that everybody gets. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, in the. I remember the same feeling of, um,. Of Mortal Kombat in the sense that like if you win the tournament you get this magical wish granted to you and so everybody has these dark paths that they build up to try to get this magical wish that nobody really explains how the hell you get the wish you know granted but it's all about unlocking dark either. tooth exactly I want that dark tooth giant man that one shots you oh yeah no I, remember, I actually um, like Axel a lot. He's just a guy with the with two giant wheels in his yeah, arms. I, I played him a lot. I uh, I actually liked um oh, what's and Grasshopper. Yeah. Oh, Grasshopper was fun. She was hard to play but though because you had the, was very her hard to superpowers that she jumped and you had to land on them. I loved uh, Spectre, if only for the speed. Like that was the one I played hands down. I I can't remember the guy who was in the tank, but I loved him. Warthog. Who was the demon? No, no, not Warthog. The, I thought um, his name was Warthog. No, no, no there was that, another that's one. That's a different one. Um, okay. He was in it. He's actually in a Warthog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the dude I'm talking about is in the tank. I can't remember his name for the life of me, but uh, he was a demon is essentially what he was, it turns out. I uh, guess demons uh, drive to Oh, the villain guy. Yes. Who you fought at the Aztec <laughs> volcano level? Yep, you fight him in the Aztec volcano level. You can actually play as him. I enjoyed the crap out of him. I also like the fact that his ending was literally like he like goes with Eclipso and says like you're going to hell. And Eclipso's like, what? No. And he's like, yes. And then he grabs him and he goes to hell. And I'm just like, holy fuck. <laughs> 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 Jesus. Although Grasshopper's ending was really dark, sweet baby rays, barbecue sauce. Um, cause hers was uh like quite literally, uh she was actually dead. Was Calypso's daughter. She comes back, uh, the government built her, she's actually a time bomb, uh, and when they get close to Calypso, they have it explode to kill Calypso and the daughter off again. Yeah. I liked Mr. Grimm, too. Minion. He was just a guy Minion. on a motorcycle. Yeah, Minion was the name of the tank Min guy. Yeah, there you go. Twisted Metal 1 also had the uh, live-action like movies at the end of the game when you beat it. Oh, I yeah. I think 2 moved on to the like the comic book style yeah. drawings. Yes, it did. Moved on to it. I never really played. We were both. Only played. Those games were awesome, though. I yeah. played two, but yeah. I, th I think the latest one may have had live action as well. Some more stuff, judging by these characters I'm seeing. I played a little bit of it. It was not fun. Yeah. At least the one for PlayStation 3. So. The, uh, yeah, some of the more new ones are... Oof. Oof. Yeah, man, that was one of Sony's big IPs back in the day. Yes, it's just crazy was. how things fall off. Sweet Tooth was even in that uh, Smash Bros. PlayStation game, I think. Oh, yeah. It was. Uh, PlayStation All-Stars. Which I never played. Oh. Yep. All right. Now on to my topic, I guess. Now you can go. <laughs> now you can go. All right. Let me remove my Wakizashi from my gut. <laughs> 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 so, uh... This weekend, I was kind of caught off guard a little bit because um, I thought this was coming in like another week or two is when it usually is. Uh, this weekend is the 12-hour challenge, which is basically a speedrunning event that happens twice a year. It's not like a centralized event like your GDQs. Uh, and For those who don't know, speedrunning is like being a game as fast as you possibly can. It's basically the loose and fast, no pun intended, <laughs> definition for speedrunning. 
Uh, so, uh, oh, wow. uh, a guy named Golden, uh, who does a lot of commentary for, at the GDQs and stuff, uh, or at least he used to. Uh, he, I know, he wasn't at the most recent one doing commentary. But uh, I think he came up with the idea for the event uh, two years ago, three years ago, something like that. So, basically, he compiles a list of all these people who kind of register for his event. And the whole idea of the 12-hour challenge is that you have 12 hours to pick up a game that you've never speedrun before, learn how to do the speedrun, and then do a run in 12 hours. And you kind of, like, post your Twitch thing on, and everybody comes and watches you. And, I, and I've done it before. I, I learned Pokemon Gold glitchless speedrun once, back when I was speedrunning oh, uh, Pokemon Red. And did it back, wait, probably like two years ago. So, on that topic... I thought it'd be interesting because we've never really talked about speedrunning on the podcast. I want to ask you guys, if you were going to enter the 12-hour challenge, what would be the game that you wanted to try to just pick up and learn how to speedrun out of nowhere? Ooh. And I even have one that I would like to, to to learn, actually. I'll answer at the end. Oh. So, uh, I don't hard. know. Yeah, that's a hard question. Why is well, this such a hard question? Like, the games that pop into my mind initially, I don't know that they count. <laughs> like, I mean, all, there are games that t- ha- take, like, a week to speedrun. World of Warcraft has a speedrun. Every game can be speedrun. Yeah. Ooh. Like, like, fighting games, like Soul Calibur, do I have to go through everybody's story mode? Yeah, there, yeah there's, different, probably there's different, different categories. categories. Yeah, there's different categories, so there's probably... You know. There's probably I, any, I, I, any percent where it's like this is the character that we have determined is the fastest to to does like the most damage, and here right. and or then like you just these, figure these out the combos against, against, on the, against these certain people. And yep, the, can, you could probably manipulate the AI to react in certain ways. Yep, that is a really hard question because like it's not just about a game that you've played either. It's about a game that yep. you've never played. Never no, it. no, you can, uh, no, 12 hour challenge is totally a game we played before. Oh, just oh, so it could be, yeah, just yeah, a game you never, never speed ran before. before. Oh, then every, I'm any guessing you've ever never speed run any game. I've never speed run any game. No, I actually, I don't actually, uh, speed run I will go with Dragster. <laughs> 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 you gotta chase that six seconds, Mel. <laughs> uh, it could be something, uh, it could be something easy and fast. Five. Maybe it's right, a game you exactly. really enjoy. But honest, my honest, doesn't count. my uh, honest uh, answer would probably just be Pokemon. Um, I don't know which one I'd want the, to the most. I mean, maybe gold or silver. Yeah. I just wish RNG manipulation was never discovered. Right. Because now the Pokemon speedruns are all about basically getting the RNG manipulation right. And if you don't, then it's kind of hard to... I mean, if you care about being competitive and having a competitive yeah. time... Uh, I would have to say Neo. I haven't actually watched a speedrun of that. I haven't weird seen because I like Soulsborne speedruns a lot. <laughs> yeah. That but, would be uh, interesting Neo, to watch. Neo would be very, uh, would probably be the one. Because I just, I enjoy Neo already. And that's really the only other area that I can think of that would really put me to the test would be mm-hmm. uh, speedrunning it at that point. Um, and it's different because like, unlike, you know, Dark Souls or um, Bloodborne, um, you're on stages, so you have to keep jumping into each stage and potentially finding a glitch within that stage that'll let you speed past certain things as opposed to actually doing them. Clip through uh, stuff. Yeah, like clip through things and whatnot, but it has to be done for each stage. You can't just like beat out like a yeah. big section of the actual game itself. You can only just do it on a stage. Yeah, so. the most interesting thing about those types of speedruns, in my opinion, is that a lot of it just comes down to... Um, well, one, can you pull off the trick if there's a trick? And two, uh, just knowing how to beat the boss as fast as possible, which yeah, is always fun. Yeah, because usually you end up running by a lot of the little guys. Yep. Yep. So it, it takes the best parts of the game. Like, it speeds past all the little guys who you're never going to really bother with. And then, because you're on so low stats, you need to know the most efficient way to kill off a boss. And then, in Neo's case, it would also be figuring out, like, you know, well, what's the best weapon to uh, choose? Um, what abilities to... Do yeah. yeah, what, what, what build skill tree you, you go into? Speedrunning. Yep, exactly. So there's, it, it would definitely be a little bit fun just because you would finally get. There's a lot of like extra little things that can be also looked at that really help 
I'll figure it out. So not only do you need glitches to potentially break through parts of the stage, but you also need to know like what weapon will be the fastest, what builds with that weapon, um, what abilities are you should you be unlocking first? Because I mean, it, if you're not leveling up, you're really not going to be getting samurai points to unlock abilities. So you're probably going to be just going by raw skills of the weapon itself. Let's see. You know, one that I would uh, possibly try to do, and actually I've thought about trying to do, is um, uh, a lot of your uh, city builder type games. And in the case of those, it's you have to speed yourself to a certain like population size and monetary size. Uh, and, uh, you know, a certain... Oh, yeah. Phase. Yeah, um, like make, so make a city fast. super fast. That exactly. would be badass one that i would totally give a good try on because at least city skylines i feel like it could do well maybe not sim city um but yeah that's that's one i would i would give a shot that would be pretty sweet it's, yeah it's fun to watch rts speedruns like that because it's, it's it's that's basically what that would remind me of that kind of speed run it's all about like yeah. resource management on the clock super fast wow um so, Mal, you were saying Pokemon, right? Yeah. I guess. Yeah, but which game? I don't know, Gold? My favorite? Or, uh, <laughs> well, Silver? It, it It is Gold. Gold is the one you run. Because yeah. uh, because you can get uh, Sandshrew, I think, uh, early on, and he learns Cut. Though, and, Monster Hunter World could be fun, too. Yeah. I'm Speaking sure there's already a leaderboard for it. <laughs> right. So, just hunting the big monsters as quick as possible, practically. Yeah. yeah, finding out, like, the best strats and weapons and stuff to take down. Yeah, I wonder what weapon is that would be run. That would be, like, a fun co-op speedrun. I always love the really weird gimmicky speedruns. Like, um, yeah. Uh, one of my favorites that happened at a GDQ was uh, Goof Troop, I think is the name of the game, for SNES. It's basically, like, a weird almost Zelda puzzle game kind of thing. And the guy played it two players, one person. He used both controllers. He just turned one of them upside down and would play oh, with geez. his fingers <laughs> under it. And But it was inverted, obviously. So, And he was having to control two different characters at the same time. That was awesome. Um, the uh, guy who played uh, both Punch-Out and Super Punch-Out at the same time this year through one controller yes, was pretty was awesome. Amazing. I like those gimmicky speed runs. I would never have the patience to learn them. Uh, uh, wait, I would, I need links to the the punch out and super punch out. I'll, I'll give it. I'll get it to I, you here in a little bit. You, I need to it's, see. It's that. a really That's, good run. That sounds fun. That sounds amazing. You got that. Think. You got like blindfolded uh, uh, battle toads and stuff. Um, oh yeah, they did that at uh, they did that as well. He had to run through um, the uh, that speeder bike one. Yeah, he always does the speeder yeah. bike level blindfolded. Yeah, yep, um, that was pretty cool. I, mine would be uh, the speed run I actually really want to learn is Paper Mario, the original Paper Mario. Oh, uh, either the glitchless, the either the glitchless or the all cards category. The the thing that like one, it's just you have to practice to get into speed running generally. Yeah, especially yeah. games with glitches. Glitches are often like fairly hard to do if you ever watch like gqs you'll always hear people talk about like frame perfect tricks and stuff that you have to do and some of these games are like 60 frames per second so you have 160 of a, of a second to put in a certain input on a certain frame to do stuff and paper mario there's an all cards category where you basically beat every chapter in the game but it has lots of glitches and i've tried to do some of them and they're kind of hard it'd be something i would just have to like but they're not like the hardest of all like speedrunning glitches by any means like it's a, a fairly easy game to learn even with its glitches hmm. so it'd just be something i had to sit down and do or i could do glitchless but it's like a, another hour and a half onto the run it becomes like a four hour speed run which is what pokemon gold used to be it was a super long run because you had to go all the way through johto then through kanto then go beat ash and all of his pokemon were like 10 levels higher than you <laughs> Dude, and he I used remember for that alligator, that and he had like level so eighty awesome. Pikachu. And you're just sitting there using your healing and using your X items while he thunders you, and hopefully doesn't crit <laughs> and kill you, and then you lose your entire speed run. That was four hours long at the last <laughs> two minutes of the game. 
Oh my god. Jeez. Red Red was the one that I I ran I, a lot and I got under two hours when the world record at the time was like one fifty, I believe. When it went in game oh. time. That that was a fun game too, but it basically was grind for a really good Nidoran, so Yeah. But uh yeah, man. Uh speedrunning's awesome. Uh, it's like always my favorite stuff to watch on Twitch <laughs> generally. Um I do love uh, GDQs. Yeah, GDQs are always great. I've been watching those since like 2014. This is the uh, first year I've actually watched a GDQ, yeah. and um, it, most of them, I'm like, most of them, most of them are like, okay, that's generally my opinion. But I will say that this year's Bloodborne, good. Bloodborne God. was a great run. Oh, oh yeah. my god, that was amazing. Plus, that guy was hey, Jesus amazing. here's toast oh, was yeah. hilarious the whole time. Absolutely. That's a good example of uh when your marathon run is is going really bad, uh like gameplay wise, but you you're so good at commentary that it doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. There was another guy who kind of said he focused on commentary a bit more um than the speed, which was um the half life one of the side games. Yeah. Uh, Did you see- speed run. Did you see the Resident Evil 7 one? No. The Resident Evil 7 one was really cool. That was awesome because uh, as carcinogen, and he, he was basically, they positioned the camera near his face, and every time there was a jump scare, he'd like turn his head and lunge at the camera and stuff. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. Yeah, I like I like the, the runners who, you know, have a bit more personality just because sometimes you, I mean, I, I realize they take a lot of focus and stuff, but yeah, like, yeah. sometimes just nothing's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean that's uh, like hands down the, the um the pinnacle. I mean like the pinnacle of perfection, at least in my eyes, because you know it's always that's always yeah. debatable. Was the Bloodborne one just because, as you guys stated, um, the commentator was hilarious. Ladders, like, <laughs> yeah, uh, ladders. ladders, ladders everywhere. Ah, uh, guys, we're done. No more ladders except for this one. We're coming up to. <laughs> it's like the longest <laughs> ladder in the game. Yeah. It's like a minute like, long got, or something. He's like, this is this like I've never played Metal Gear Solid, but it's got nothing on these ladders. <laughs> it was just like it was like some of the stuff that he just said, the way he said it was wonderful. And I mean, the gameplay itself was really good too. I mean, he went up to those bosses and quite literally would stagger lock them to death. I mean, that's yeah. pretty impressive for a game that's about hey, these bosses are gonna fuck your day up for hours. <laughs> <laughs> those ring rates. Yeah. So, I mean, when you've got a guy who just goes like, LOL, run up, slap, 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 dead. He's like, and we move on. I'm just like, good God, man. (laughs) Mercy for them. Show them mercy, Sam. Yeah. I also like that run that he did all the DLC stuff, too. It was pretty awesome. I didn't. Oh, did he do another run? Yeah, it was all bosses. That was the run. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. He he included all the DLC. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah, I was cool to see him like see all the DLC and whatnot. I just it, the whole run was really cool, and the fact that he even went out of his way to get like the true ending as well while he was yeah. doing it. Well, yeah, you have to to get the last boss. Yeah, mm-hmm. I guess that's true. Yeah, you'd be right. Yeah. So, yep. Uh, I love speed running. It's great. It's fun to watch them. Uh, there you go. Yeah. All right, everybody, this has been episode 41 of Podcast of Five Rings, your source of enlightenment in the realm of video games, tabletop, anime, film, and tech. Each episode of Podcast of Five Rings releases Monday mornings on iTunes, SoundCloud, and topic by topic, day by day on YouTube with the full video releasing on Friday. Check us out on Twitter, Podcast 5R, Facebook, P5R Podcast. Check out Meta and Lily streaming. You got stream Monster Hunter yet? Uh, yeah, we streamed on last Saturday, and then just yesterday we streamed. I'm sure you're going to stream some more of it. So check them out. Twitch.tv backslash PSO flow. I got through the outro without messing up. I did it. So far. I don't have to commit Sudoku anymore, do I? Yes. <laughs> there you go. All right, good. I don't want to do puzzles all night. <laughs> I got other business to take care of. Other business. All right. Until next week, guys. Take it easy. We'll see you then. Later. Bye.